Hello JHS. So I've heard a couple people asking about how to scan things into the computer. So I thought I'd make a quick little video here to show you some of the different options that you do have when you want to do that. So this is the short and sweet version here. The first thing that you're going to need to do is uh, you'll just have to go to the copy machine in the uh, teacher's lounge, take your papers with you, and you just put them right in the tray like you would uh, when you're making your regular copies. Pretty simple. After that you'll need your flash drive and you can go ahead and put it into the USB port. Now, I don't know how this works with the uh, copy machine in the main office. I haven't tried that yet. So this is the one in the teacher's lounge again. After that, uh, it should recognize your device, and it will pop up a little menu that says you can scan to your USB, or you can print things from your USB. I usually scan things to it. I have not tried that second option of printing. Once it recognizes your USB device, you have a variety of options. The first option here is uh, determining how you want to scan it in. If you want it to be black and white or grayscale or color, uh, you also have the option of uh, having the copy machine uh, determine that for you based on what it scans in. The second uh, setting here is uh, how many sides you want it, if one-sided, two-sided, or if you want it to rotate sides, things like that. Original type, um, whether you want it to be a photo or text, or if you're scanning in maps or newspapers or things like that, I usually don't touch that. Um, and then the last thing here is if you wanted to name your documents. If you don't put anything in there, it just names them numerically from one to, I don't know, however many it goes. After this, you have the advanced settings. The first one here is image options, and you can lighten the pictures that you're scanning in, or you can darken them. Uh, you can also do sharpness and saturation, things like that. Resolution is a big one. It usually starts at 200 pixels per inch. You can work all the way up to 600. Just be aware that 600 is a pretty big file size. It takes a lot longer time to load. After that, you can enhance your image, uh, have contrast and things like that. And there are some other options here. The third tab up at the top is the layout adjustment. Um, you can do different things on what you want your edges to be or orientation and things like that. Um, I haven't gotten a lot of time to get into that. And the third one here is the filing options. So this is how it saves, and this is pretty important. Um, the file format, um, you have, I think, five different choices here. Yep, five. I'll go ahead and take a second to explain these different options and what they mean, some of the benefits and cons. PDF is uh, pretty readable by any computer or program. Um, it's a pretty standard file format. It's uh, got a nice variety of options. You can upload different things or have it linked to certain things, and editing is uh, pretty nice. PDF-A is for archiving. Um, there are some more restrictions on that, but that's for things like if you wanted to keep them for a very long time without having them change. The only drawback is you can't have like audio or video, or it can't access anything outside of the PDF, so just be aware of that. Um, XPS is kind of like Microsoft's version of PDF. Um, I never really use it. It's not as uh, capable or compatible with other computers. TIFF, um, the TIFF file, is good for large photos. So TIFF and JPEG are both kind of photo um, file formats. And so if you need a large photo, something that you need to edit or uh, you need a lot of detail in there, TIFF does not compress it. So it's going to be a really big file size, but it's uh, got a lot of things in there. Uh, the last one here is JPEG. That's the one that I use mostly. JPEG is really good for online photos. If you're just going to um, scan it in and then display it up on a screen, it's got a smaller size and um, it still has good color and uh, it's very compatible with a lot of different programs. Again, I usually choose JPEG just for the things that I use it for, scanning things in and showing pictures of my notes and things like that up on my web page. After you do that, you can hit OK. Um, that just saves what you've been doing so far. The very last tab is Job Assembly. Um, not much there. I frankly don't know what that does. But after you get all that done, you can hit Start. And the copy machine is going to eat your papers. And so however many papers you have, just be aware that the more you have, the longer it will take. It will say it's processing with however many originals you scanned in. And after it scans them into your USB, it'll tell you, hey, it's complete and it'll kick you back to the original uh, start screen there. So I hope that this helped. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you know, let me know. Thanks.